Fourth oral question, Lord Goddard of Stockport. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, Avanti was awarded a six-month contract in October 2022 to provide the opportunity for its recovery plan to yield demonstrable improvements. It has done this, with services increased and delays and cancellations reduced. In this next six-month period, Avanti will need to do more to win back passengers with a reliable and dependable service. My Lords, with accountability comes the chance to put things right. I thank the Minister again for another magnificent effort of defending the indefensible. Um, my, my, my question is quite simple. Would she agree to meet with me as a frequent flyer of Avanti trains to hear the other side of the coin? Because in the Hansard report from Tuesday, she commented that not all train delays are due to Avanti, which is completely true. But the other side of that coin is Avanti have completely changed the rosters and rotors for staff. They are now on 10 and 11 hours, and that means they have a 20 minute window at any station they land at before they leave again. If the train is 30 minutes late in, there is no time to change. That train going out then is late, and it's never decreased in circle. And this is affecting the staff. And further on, you commented about sickness levels. Well, any members, all that staff now on Banty trains feel undervalued and overworked. And that can't be a recipe for an outward-facing railway system. And if Avanti can't treat them with respect, because all they want to do is give us a good service, then somebody else should be looking after that railway system. Well, I would be very happy to meet the Noble Lord uh, to discuss Avanti, but I'm hoping to offer him something slightly better. I will offer him a meeting with the Rail Minister, and indeed I will extend that offer to all Noble Lords um, so that uh, we might uh, discuss the issues that Noble Lords are experiencing um, on Avanti, and he might be able to reassure the Noble Lord that we are taking these issues very seriously and we want Avanti to put them right. Lords, as the Scottish use of Avanti, I hope the Minister can understand the despair we felt when we heard this decision. We on the West Coast look in envy uh, at the East Coast trains. Can she explain why the West Coast line wasn't taken into public ownership after such a disastrous performance? Um, I am uh, uh, aware that some of the challenges of travelling down the west coast from Scotland, uh, many of those are actually due to infrastructure changes which are happening right in the the north um, of England. Um, And I think sometimes it is is very tempting to compare the west coast uh, to the east coast. And there is one other uh, element of the east coast that I I think is is worth uh, uh, thinking about, and that is that it has competition. There are open access operators on the East Coast as well, and I think that has, plays a contributing factor in making the services better all round. My Lords, my noble friend will be aware of the severe delays and disruption uh, caused by TransPennine Express, which seems to be competing uh, very well with Avanti uh, on its record. Uh, will my noble friend update the House on what the, pl- the Government plans are for a possible renewal? of such a hopeless operator? Is it going to be allowed more time or will it be put out to tender for other franchise operators? The contract for TransPennine Express will come to um, uh uh, comes to an end on the, the current contract comes to an end on the 28th of May. Um, it too is under a recovery plan at the moment. But I would point out to noble lords that both TransPennine Express and Avanti have one thing in common that no other train operating company shares, and that is that it has suffered the immediate um, and simultaneous withdrawal of rest day working uh, by the trade unions. That has an, an, had an enormous impact um, on their services. No other train operating company has had that. And and I think that's worth bearing in mind. Yeah. My lords, my lords, it, it's disappointing to hear the uh, noble baroness, the minister, blaming the workforce again for the problems on Avanti. Yeah. Yeah. Rail passengers in the north and uh, northwest and Wales that will have greeted the six-month extension to Avanti's contract with incredulity. Over the past six months, they've broken records for delays and cancellations. Yet, astonishingly, the Times reported earlier this week that the government could offer Avanti a further 10-year extension at the end of this six-month extension. Can the minister please now rule this out? Can I just say uh, from the outset, I am absolutely not blaming the workforce here. Absolutely not. I have never said that I was. 
Um, but I have to say I am putting a little bit of blame at the door of the trade unions. The noble lady will be unsurprised um, to hear. Um, in terms of the process for the next round uh, of contracts for the West Coast, because of course there will have to be a contract um, on the West Coast, the publication of the 10-year period was, was a statutory notice. Um, should it go to Avanti, the six-month contracts would be taken off it. Should it go to another operator, it might be for up to 10 years. I don't think the noble lady should read too much into the 10 years. It could be any period up to that amount. My lords, uh, as a fellow uh, traveller on uh, Avantin, often in the same coach as Lord, the noble Lord Goddard, uh, he, I, I agree entirely with his comments. But it's not only the trains are delayed or cancelled, it's sometimes that the services on those trains are, are not provided. So food in particular, these are long journeys, and often at the very last moment, often when you're sat on the train, you've been told there will be food, they say, oh, we haven't been able to load the food, there's no, there's no refreshments on the journey. Can we please bear in mind it's a whole service, uh, and that the staff are wonderful, but they are labouring against impossible circumstances at the moment. The right Reverend Prelate is, is entirely right, and, and that is one of the things that we hold Avanti to account. Uh, passenger experience is at the heart of what we want to do with our railway system, and as we look uh, to the future for Avanti and indeed for all train operating companies, passenger experience is one of the key things that they are judged upon. My Lord, is the Minister aware that in the. Oh, no, no. It, with more, after such a record of failure, what incentive? Is there for other train operating companies to maintain the highest standards and to improve? When the Minister gave us uh, her answers the day before yesterday on the statement, she was not specific. Can she make clear now? Will Avanti face financial penalties for their failures over recent months? All train operating companies face financial uh, penalties or financial jeopardy um, from their performance, as all train operating companies have performance fees. Um, and it is the case that um, under the current period, which, which comes to an end at the end of March, there will be an independent evaluation of the performance of Avanti and performance fees um, will be set accordingly. But I would point out that there are two issues um, that really impact uh, performance at the moment, and that is the ongoing uh, issues around train crew and availability, and the second is, some, is growing concerns around infrastructure, which is why our reforms to bring track and train more closely together are so vital. Uh, my Lords, is the Minister aware that in the last quarter of 2022, Avanti trains achieved an historic low in uh, only 45 per cent of their trains were actually on time? Now, sad character that I am, I've looked back through the statistics uh, uh, on uh, train travel on the West Coast Main Line. It, th that 45 per cent is a low that was never, uh, on, never received under uh, British Rail, or the London Midland and Scottish Railway, or the London and North Western Railway. I gave up when it came to the London and Birmingham Railway the, in, in the 19th century because I was bored uh, with my own uh, research. And yet, despite that historic low, is it fair or right that taxpayers uh, should fund dividends to shareholders yeah. and bonuses to management yeah. when those of us who travel regularly on Avanti would rather walk than catch a train? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm delighted to be able to tell the noble lord that, that um, at the current time 90% of Avanti trains arrive within 15 minutes of their uh, scheduled arrival time. That's up from 75% um, in early January. So I'm sure that noble lords can see the trajectory. In terms of the dividend to which he refers, that was uh, relating to a financial period to March 2021, which is uh, well over two years ago now, and obviously not related to um, the current issues relating to performance. I've been travelling on the West Coast Line for over 40 years. Uh, and admittedly, this is anecdotal, but my experience was that up until COVID, the service was actually quite good on Avanti. Um, indeed, so was Virgin before Avanti, uh, and certainly was better than the East Coast Line, quite apart from the fact the East Coast Line went to Edinburgh. Um, whereas the West Coast Line, of course, went to the fair city of Glasgow. But <laughs> twice the Minister has mentioned infrastructure problems, because historically that was the problem with the East Coast Line, but there was sufficient investment in it to improve it. 
What is the nature of the infrastructure problems in the West Coast Line, and why haven't they been dealt with in the 13 years that uh, the government has been in charge? The government is putting record investment into our railway infrastructure, and I think there are two issues around infrastructure. The first um, are the sort of long-term plans that, that, that need to be put in place in order to, to upgrade it, but others are, sh are short-term issues that happen. For example, overnight there was a cable theft at Wolverhampton. Cable theft is not Avanti's fault, but it has caused some of its trains to be delayed this morning. So we've got to clamp down um, on the sorts of short-term uh, problems that we see, but also to continue to invest in the West Coast mainline, and that's exactly what we're doing.